Hey, if you're curious to know where is the best place, the best source to go to find the right, the sweetest real estate deals, then you found the right video. Hey, Daniel, cue an intro, please. Hey, how's it going, friend? Juan Pablo here. Hey, if you're new to this channel, welcome. First and foremost, on this channel, we typically like to discuss the three pillars to financial freedom, which are personal finance. We talk about credit, your budgeting, your debt to credit ratio, and all that good stuff. We also like to discuss funding, having a repeatable source of investment capital. And third, and certainly not least, real estate investing. We like to focus on multi-units and multi-family investing. So again, if you're new, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. So that way, YouTube, the Google, the other, the Google, right? <laughs> the algorithm can do its thing to provide you with additional videos to help you get a, help you get close to your goal of financial freedom. So without further ado, let's dive into the topic. So you might be new to real estate or you might be somewhat experienced and you're just curious to know what are the best ways, the best sources, the best places to find sweet cash flowing deals. Now I'm talking about rental properties, buy and hold, in which you can get the cash flow of the passive income so that it exceeds your paycheck and you can say goodbye to the nine to five. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna outline a, a few sources for you to entertain. Also share with you some pros, some cons, and some of them and which ones I highly recommend. So let's dive into it. So one of my, um, let's say starting out, right? Starting out, uh, one of the best ways that I found deals, I won't say it's the best way, but my first way of finding deals was uh, just going to open houses, believe it or not. Um, I'm a walker, <laughs> I walk a lot. And uh, I happen to be walking uh, down the streets of Jersey City, south to the Northeast with my aunt. And as we're walking, I just happen to see some open house signs and I just walked into an open house. Uh, it was a property I definitely couldn't afford. <laughs> However, uh, the good thing about it is that I was able to make connections. So the agent who actually uh, was facilitating the open house received my contact information and it was, it was a deal since then. Uh, within a, a few months, uh, I ended up closing a deal through that agent. I didn't close on that particular deal in which I went to the open house for, but he introduced me to another property and yada, 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 and then closing the deal. So open houses. Now, it's not my favorite, of course, because it does involve your time, your time in regard to hitting the streets, your, your labor, or uh, just dropping around neighborhoods and so forth. But it, it is a, a great cost, effective, affordable way to find deals. Now, speaking of driving, here's another way to source deals that you might be familiar with. Driving for dollars. Okay, that's the second thing. Now, drop for dollars, this is where you can find off-market deals. And you can also find on-market deals, as I mentioned. You know, you can see a sign, oh, open house, or for sale by owner, or this is for rent. Maybe they might be interested in selling it to me, even though it's for rent. So you can drive and, and see properties that may be on the market. They might be listed with an agent. However, with driving for dollars, you can just look around and you can see properties in which it looks vacant. You can see that there's no blinds or curtains in the windows. You can see the grass is overgrown or depending on the season where you live, there might be snow on a driveway that's unshoveled. Uh, you might also see the building just looking unkept, right? These are really good signs that the property is vacant. And if it's vacant, that's the indication that the seller may be more likely to entertain selling the property for you. So there is some due diligence you have to do, right? You have to for one, even though you might have the, 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 the address, you take some pictures of the property, but you do have to do some due diligence in locating the seller, obtaining the seller's contact information and reaching out to him or her to see if they would like to sell. Now the pro is it's off market, meaning you don't have to pay an agent or a wholesaler any middleman fee for that deal. And you're speaking directly to the seller, so that way you can negotiate the best terms possible, the best price possible, so that you can get a sweet deal close, okay? Now, the other downside is, it, being that it's vacant, more than likely it might need some work done to it. It might not be in uh, rent-ready condition, so you might have to put some, some, some rehab just to make sure that it, it is in rent-ready condition, okay? Now, the third way that you can find deals Let's say if you're not that person who wants to be spending their gas money, right? Spending their time and their mileage just driving all through these neighborhoods. 
Well, you can do that from the comfort of your home as well by sending out a direct mail campaign. So that's my third way. Direct mail campaigns uh, can be done in various ways, such as you can send out postcards, you can send out yellow letters. It's just pretty much mailing to uh, properties that are vacant and fit a certain criteria, whether it's a three bedroom, two bath, 1200 square feet or higher, uh, properties from owners who live out of state. So this is a set criteria in which um, a lot of uh, investors target to be able to locate the, the um, a deal that they could potentially close on, being that it has a higher degree of actually uh, being sold, being that the financials, I mean, being that the motivation is there, if that makes sense. Let me give you an example. Uh, I'm an out-of-state investor, and I have properties in which uh, they're in decent shape. So I receive a ton of yellow letters, letters, text messages, people who just reach out to me or find my information online, and they're reaching out to me see if I want to sell one of the properties in my portfolio. Because they believe that I, I will be a, a great candidate to, to sell the property, okay? But of course, I'm not trying to sell my property. However, I will network with them to see if they have more properties to, to provide me with because I'm a buyer. That makes sense. Okay, so the pros and cons of direct mail, um, unlike driving for dollars or doing open houses or what have you, when you do uh, direct mail, there is an uh, initial cash outlay. There's certain softwares you have to get access to. Let's say ListSource, for instance, or you might be using click to mail to mail out the, the letter. So there is some there are some cost there are some costs involved. And, and, and there are marketing costs. And when you send out that direct mail campaign, you will receive correspondence from sellers. And all the correspondence might not be uh, jolly. <laughs> they could be a tad bit angry because it might not just be you sending them direct mail campaigns, postcards, yellow letters, and so forth. It could be thousand others <laughs> and so they might not be a happy camper when they receive your uh, your postcard and it might give you an earful when they call you but it's not to say I'm not trying to scare you here and say that it doesn't work or all sellers are going to be irate because it works right so as a result of doing this direct mail campaign yes you might get some angry irate sellers but you might get some people who are willing to partner with you or not partner with you but sell a property to you so you have to keep that in mind. But what I'm getting at is the con is you do have to feel a lot of calls. Okay, so your phone may be ringing off the hook and you wanna make sure that you answer that phone quickly because there's competition. I actually had a wholesaler friend um, a while back and he was sharing with me how he had a day job. He worked at a nine to five and uh, he sent out a direct mail campaign on the phone with the seller. Seller was motivated with the right price, perfect deal. And the seller's old school and said, hey, I'm not into all this dot loop and DocuSign, hello sign, all this technology crap to sign contracts. He's like, if you come to my door, I will sign the contract. He can say, hey, just to let you know, I've been receiving a ton of mail from many different people like you. And I told them all, the first person who can come to my door today, I'll sign off on a contract. And the guy was like, my, my friend was like, hey, well, is it cool if we do it uh, after 8 p.m. When I, when I get off work? Because he's like, hey, the first person. So when he finally got off work at 8 p.m., he called the guy, said he'll be, he'll be on his way. And the seller said, uh, unfortunately, I signed a deal with somebody else. So you do have to strike when the iron's hot. And you got to be available when that phone is ringing. Sure, you can go to voicemail, you can call them back. But just keep in mind, there's competition out there. Okay. The pro is you're, you're still reaching out directly to the seller and you can actually get more reach instead of just driving many hours all over town. You can just mail out your direct mail. So you, your reach is, is a lot greater. Now here's another way of finding deals. So another thing to write, there's many ways to find deals. You can do online searches as well. So that's another tip. You can do online searches. Let's say you're doing a LoopNet or you've got a, access to the MLS, which is great. It does require your time going through the internet to see what deal is actually a really good deal. And you do have to just scour the internet. And it's not to say that uh, it's a bad thing. It just takes more time for you to, to be more uh, meticulous, building through a lot of leads. And the downside is that it's not really, uh, they're, they're on market. So I'm saying, I'm not trying to say that on market deals are not good deals, but 
many other people can get access to them too. They can see it. And sometimes you might get into a bidding war. So what you want to do in that situation, if a deal just shows up, you want to strike when the iron's hot. Because this is time. As you can tell, I'm talking a lot about uh, things being time sensitive. Because there's a thing in real estate, a saying in real estate that goes, time kills all deals in real estate. So you want to act fast. But the MLS could be, or, or any other online search engine that has deals, could be a, a good source of deals. But there's competition there as well. Now, I'll save the best for last. So here's the final tip of what I preference when getting deals, especially my, my inventory. I like working with deal finders, period. So yes, the, all those other deals I mentioned, hey, you can get them off market, you can cut the middleman out, you can potentially do a deal yourself, but even if you do a online, let's say the MLS, there might be an agent who's listed it, so you might work directly with them instead of, so you just work with a listing agent instead of two different agents. But I prefer working with deal finders because working with deal finders it saves me a whole lot of time. <laughs> and uh, why is that important? It's just, just to break things down for you. When you're doing all this, this work yourself, right? Um, and this is a great book I want to recommend. It's called Who Not How. Um, the link's in the description below. Now, with the book, he talks about you always want to find a who to do something instead of you trying to figure out the how. It's, it's just outsourcing, right? Delegating is someone who can, who can do a better job than you can at your own task. Right, so with that book that I read, um, I realized that it's wiser for me to leverage my relationships to have these deal finders, whether they're wholesalers or agents, find deals that fit my criteria and fit my purchasing power. Okay, and I have a, a video recommendation below too about finding deals, so just check the link below to learn more if you would like some more insight about that. Now, I prefer an agent who does this full time or a wholesaler who does this full time to constantly look for deals and send me the sweetest deals that fit my criteria. Because all I have to do um, in that situation is just do my analysis, submit my offer, <laughs> and call it a day. But I don't have to be uh, stressed out, uh, fielding the internet to look at all these sweet deals. I don't have to spend time and gas money, drive for dollars. I don't have to spend marketing costs, sending out a direct mail campaign, or I don't have to be walking the streets to see if there's any open houses. I don't have to do any of those things if I have deal finders doing those things on my behalf. Now, the downside is, yes, you have to pay a commission or you have to pay a assignment fee. Okay, well, they brought their labor to the table, so why not reward them? As long as the deal makes sense, considering their fee, then by golly, I'm gonna move forward with it all day long. All right guys, so hopefully that was useful for you. Now, if you're interested in learning more about the whole real estate process, about how to acquire multi-unit deals, whether they're inside your, your neighborhood or outside, let's say out of state, and how to use creative financing, then I have a video training for you. Just check the link below in the description to learn more. As always, guys, this is to your success. Continue to earn passively, live passionately. Peace.